Yeah. Hey friendos, it's DW. It's been a while since I've done a video, so I thought I would take this chance to actually update you on the progress for Little Shop or the post post game jam LD46 or Ludum Dare 46 game jam update. So I'm going to consider this my first official devlog for the project, and I'm, this is going to be a continuing thing because I want this game will come out. I'm sure of it. So we'll quote me on that one for now. But in the meantime, I want to get into this. Now, there's time descriptions or time links and stuff in the description below. Take a look below if you want to jump around to get to the technical bits or if you want to talk more about the game or if you just want to know how life is going for me. And that being said, let's get to it, shall we? So outside of the code editor and actual game development process, I've been doing a lot of work since the end of the game jam. More specifically, kind of a, a bit of introspective reflection about where I actually want to take this whole game development thing. I tend to do a lot of self-reflection, especially after big milestones or have some sort of success or failure or anything like that. So I want to take this a little bit more seriously and I want to kind of think further ahead, but not get too far ahead of myself. So I started doing some digging on some resources. Started reading the Game Development Handbook by Michael Futter, or Futter, Futter, Michael Futter, so far, it's a great book. I'm not done. I'm only on chapter four so far. But the opening chapters talk a lot about the real basic stuff about what you should be doing to kind of get your finances organized, but also how you should value, value your time. And to that point, I've started thinking about a lot more about the time I'm investing in this uh, towards game development versus other side projects and distractions or in adventures and whatever. I have a real life. I got a full-time day job with the whole pandemic going on. I have two little kids at home that are not in school or daycare. So I have a big commitment to them and, I, and I'm a very focused dad. I really emphasize on that. I really appreciate that time, but also it's a lot of work. And so I also like doing YouTube videos and I like, you know, doing that kind of thing. So with that, I started tracking my time with a tool called Clockify. It's an open source tool that you can have a paid version. There's a free account version that's ad free, which I love. Has a Google, has a Android app for me to kind of track wherever I'm going doing stuff, but it's helping me track how much time I'm going to have to do these different projects, whether it's my website, my blog, YouTube videos, or the game itself. So sort of doing that a little bit more seriously, and we're gonna see what that actually does with all of my projects overall. So that's a big change for me but I think it's gonna be an important one. So let's talk about some stuff in the game. More specifically, I now have a Windows, Linux, and a web version of Little Shop of Wall Street available uh, on itch.io, and it is automatically deployed uh, whenever I trigger it, which is awesome. I spent the last one to two weeks, uh, or good one to two weeks on this, uh, implementing continuous integration and deployment, or CICD. So what is that? This is just in a nutshell, the idea of CI or continuous integration is the times where I commit code to my source code repository. So I add some new feature to the game and I commit it and I push that code to the repository. I touch the microphone and I commit that to the repository. Now, what this does is a, my build server, which is GitHub Actions in this case, will validate that code and merge it all together to make sure I didn't break the game and actually notify me saying, hey, you broke it or you didn't break it. And I can continually add tests and improve this validation process over time. That is amazing because I know that as I'm adding more stuff, I know that it's working in sort of a different platform than just works on my PC. So that's spectacular. Continuous deployment is the idea that I'm taking that completed build and if it meets the right criteria and I tag it correctly or I trigger a certain thing, it will deploy it to a distribution platform or another area for other people to consume. So in this case, I'm deploying it to itch.io as soon as I uh, validate it enough and I trigger that, that deployment. It's all done with, it's all done automatically on, on my workflow. So I'm not breaking stride, I continue focusing on development and it gets deployed and released to you nice people. Now you might, you might be asking, why did I spend so much time working on this? The reason is I've been doing software dev for a good 15, 16 years and I'm a DevOps nerd. So I really love the DevOpsy side of stuff. But more importantly, the, I firmly believe in the value of automation. And I really think automating pieces away of the, I would call it boring or repetitive tasks 
allows me to focus heavily on the one task, which is building the game. That's a hard enough task on its own that is not repetitive and it is constantly throwing new curveballs at me. Doing exports and deploying them to itch.io, I those I, they they're they're boring, lengthy, repetitive tasks that can be done by a computer. Computers are good at that stuff. And so I programmed it with GitHub Actions and now it's it's just done. I never have to worry about it again for this project or another one. So that means more new features for you faster, hopefully, and me more focused on the game. So that's awesome. So what about Little Shop itself? What changes have I rolled that have I even fixed the gameplay? Yes. Yes, I have. So first thing I've done, it's kind of a boring feature, but it is important to me is I've done mouse only control. So just the mouse, which is great. Originally in the Ludum Dare uh, game jam entry, I had keyboard entry along with some mouse controls because that was with me and Darcy not being coordinated on that front. It wasn't bad. It was just a product of the game jam. And I remember it a while ago when I was doing on when I was doing game streams of, of and doing game analysis on, on two hours of gameplay. I played The Witcher 1, a, a re-release re of it from, from Sated Project Red. And what I found is they've rolled out on The Witcher 1 um, mouse-only controls. And that's a complicated game. There's a lot to The Witcher 1. and But it was simple. It's easy to pick up and easy to navigate and play around with. And I'm not a keyboard mouse guy. I'm a, I'm a controller guy. I'm a, con I'm a console player. So I'm some sort of pleb walking around doing nothing with my keyboard. But that being said... Um, I wanted to make this easier for people to pick up and play. That's really the, it's the ease of accessibility. And so added mouse control only, and it's actually a lot cleaner, a lot more streamlined than it originally was. It has also demonstrated how I can get myself uh, more towards a mobile version if I wanted to. I've tested this out on a mobile web version. It doesn't work, just to be clear, uh, but I, can, I know that what's wrong with it, and that's because I'm using the wrong events. So I'm thinking a little bit more about whether or not I should do a mobile-based version of this as well. Next, in terms of gameplay mechanics itself, huge changes. Remember that broken computer and the fact that when you fed the plant, it was just random food you kind of got, it was a dice roll? Well, that's all changed. The computer is fixed, officially. So now, when you click on the computer, it brings up an actual UI where you can sell, buy and sell stocks very much the Wall Street kid component of the Little Shop of Wall Street, which was the whole point of the game jam that just never got in there because it was really complicated. And as I've learned so far, it is a really complicated feature. I have no idea why we were trying to do that. On top of that, I reused a bunch of that UI on the plant feeding mechanic. So now you can actually, you can make money buying stocks and you can use it to feed your plant to buy it fancier food or whatever. There's more gameplay to come with that, but the, the core gameplay loop piece or core gameplay mechanics are now there. Now the next thing I got to do is kind of just make it a full loop so people can actually play a full game similar to the game jam because that, that I broke the game loop in that whole process. So next steps, what are the next steps for this? Well, as like I said, before, like I said, I've broken the game loop, so the game isn't complete. I'm not at my first milestone. The 0.1 milestone is in my crosshairs right now but I need to fix that game loop. And to do that, I gotta do a little bit of game balancing and some implementation. On the next video, I'll talk a little bit more about that process, the modeling that I've used and stuff like that to actually flesh out how the gameplay will work and how I know it's gonna be balanced enough or how I think it's gonna be balanced enough. And with that, my friend does, I'm gonna call it a wrap. So if there's something more technical you wanted me to dive deeper into, whether it's the Godot instancing or continuous integration and deployment, um, drop me a line in the comments. I know there's some interest for the Godot in instancing already, but like I said, it's about balancing time and those, those, those technical videos sometimes take a bit more time than I, uh, than I originally intended. I want to balance that along with the devlog videos, along with the game development itself. But if you're, if there is interest, drop me a line down below and I'll see what I can do. And with that, have yourself a pleasant day and or evening and take care.